Hopefully I don't hit this microphone. Um, we are live. I think, yes, yes we are. Hello, everyone. Saldy, Saldy. <laughs> uh, Pavlovian response still in my head. Um, yeah, so welcome hey guys. to our stream. Back on trend mm -hmm. 20 minutes late after a runtime of getting in there real good and early. You, uh, you know the tradition, y'all. It is a tradition at this point. We almost guarantee you this service. Exactly. This is one of those ones where we're going to be late sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. on... But we're here now. We're ready to talk. It has been quite a week, and it will be even quite more some weeks as we get that much closer to the show, you guys. We've got a three weeks left. Uh huh. Oh my gosh, yeah, because rehearsals start next week. Just, Woo! it's getting to the time of the year where I can't help but smile and be super duper excited about everything because, like, mm -hmm. guys, we're so close. We're so, we're so, so close. close. And we're um, so close to finding out the winner right now, yeah. too. This is we're the closest we've ever been so far. I know. <laughs> Every day we get closer. And then at Crazy. one point, it starts all over again to next year. So, yes, Ooh, welcome yep. to the Eurovision Family Glee stream. I am Lily Love Stuff, mm -hmm. uh, joined by... I'm your big Yes! Um, and so, we're going to be doing our... Oh, continue, sorry. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, so, yeah, this week is another week of American Song Contest, kind of... Touching on a couple of pre-party things that happened between last stream and this stream. Um, and we will then wrap up our ranking, whatever we're calling this, or like our little review of every single song in the contest. So this is the last mm -hmm. seven, right? Yeah, seven songs today, yeah, I think. this will be it. And then we reviewed all of them? What? I know, I know it's wild. <laughs> um, but yeah, and welcome... Georgios Papadopoulos, I'm happy to see you're here. I think I actually got your username right the first time this week, so um, kudos to me. Um, now I'm just being egotistical. <laughs> Thanks for joining us once again, Georgios. Always yeah. great to have you. Exactly. So let's go ahead and kick it off with the articles of the week that we yeah. have. Um, I, I know there's one that happened, our interview with uh, Mia. I'm going to guess uh -huh. it was the, the one that got you the most excited. Well, I mean, like, it's it's like I wanted to do it, but at the same time, first of all, I didn't have time to do it. Second of all, like, I'm too nervous to talk to that artist because of just how high I have the song mm -hmm. and how much I would just, like, absolutely geek out in front yeah. of her and embarrass myself and the site. So I'm very happy, very glad that Elda was able to take care of that. It's a really, really cool interview, you guys. You find out that Mia played in a, a traditional Croatian band. She played the tambora, tr made the transition into country music. Her, uh... The artist that she wants to duet with most is Taylor Swift. She's such a an interesting, outstanding person, and I'm, and she has a Christmas album apparently too. I adore her, and I'm going to be looking forward to her other stuff after this season too. I mean, I'm not at all surprised to hear she wants to do it with Taylor Swift. Honestly, right? I'm down for it. Like, we need more. I'm, I'm we need so down, more you guys. Like, as a society, we need more of that mm -hmm. for sure. Um, yeah, and Christmas. We anything... have the birthday article oh wait sorry what sorry i was gonna say and you know what um christmas aren't like it's always gonna have some music in the christmas rotation yeah she was smart for that yeah i'm sorry now so you had mentioned earth day so uh that's yeah today. so we have an earth day video so if you guys don't know then um you should i highly advise that you tune into the junior eurovision song contest because these kids are talking a lot about the most practical ways we can use art to save our planet and regarding earth day they have the best expertise on that yeah. not the adult in the adult contest go ahead check out the earth day video check out the earth um earth day article from the site um <laughs> and overall just understand that these children are the ones teaching us how to take care of our planet and yeah. we have them to thank for that. And not to mention, they are equally as talented as the adult artists. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, no. I'm sorry. Like, the junior brings the bangers. Like, the ever since Don't Touch My Tree, um, it has been a thing. It's the message song we get the most from junior, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, that, like, general friendship, I guess. They get ballads. It's yeah. so good all around, it's a, these it's, message songs. Yeah, and like an adult Eurovision, the message songs are always ballads. It's like, mm -hmm. no, give me like Palante. Like, like Palante slaps. Um, you know, Palante. Slaps. 
Palente does not need to slap that hard. No, it doesn't. The so there's there's no reason for it to slap that hard. <laughs> yeah, so the kid the kids are definitely all right there. Um, mm-hmm. So let's go ahead and uh, we've got one more article this week. Um, it is your article. Um, yes. So the- it's not up yet. It'll be up um, within the next twenty four hours. I have a part three to the Brevity series, y'all, and that goes before we head into the final days leading to Eurovision, so there's probably going to be a part four at this rate, but Brevity part three, I address doubt. So what are the ways that Italy can't win? I dissect that a little bit more based on the other competition and what the juries might think about the performance. So go ahead and check that out. It's going to appear on the site just within a few hours, so by all means, check out the site, that and all the other awesome content, too. And something else just went up on the site a minute ago that we didn't talk about, but that's okay. You guys can read that article, too. It's basically about the (laughs) American Song Contest viewership. So that ties in and makes a nice segue for American Song Contest. Because Um, we are the viewership. (laughs) Exactly. Um, So (laughs) the fifth heat happened on Monday. And Mm -hmm. now we've heard all 56 songs competing at this point. All yeah. 56 have been heard, and... That is unbelievable. I can't believe we made it this far, and I can't believe this show has made it this far. They're not going to cancel it, like, in the middle of the season. Because at this point, it's like a reality TV show. It's a country ballad reality TV show. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean to I be fair, I love, I if it's a reality... if To be fair, if it's a singing contest... The country ballad's always going to be there because they keep mentioning demographics of who watch, who watch these shows. There's a lot of people in the South, a lot of mm-hmm. people who are rural and in the South. Um, you may have to reiterate that to me every stream, just so I'm reminded. Yeah, I'm just letting you know. It's <laughs> just letting you know what happens. These are mm-hmm. these are people who tend to like country. Um, so the states, mm-hmm. yes, states of mm-hmm. Illinois, California, Idaho, New Mexico, Missouri. Uh, North Carolina, Vermont, Michigan, and Maryland all went on to compete in the territories of American Samoa and Guam. Um, those are the people, or the, the states and territories we had represented this week. Mm-hmm. So um, let's go ahead and. I'm sorry, we said we fired it up. I'm sorry, that's, that's distracting me, making me think of Alicia, Mis- uh, Alicia <laughs> Michelle's <laughs> streams on Monday nights. Um, yeah, so were there any, uh, the qual, oh, right, the qualifiers from last week, which was Heat 4, mm-hmm. um, do you want to go ahead and read those real quick, because we should probably start with that before we go into Heat 5. Yes, so, um, the jury qualifier from Heat 4 was Washington, the singer Alan Stone with his kind of psychedelic rock song, A Bit of Both. The other three qualifiers were Massachusetts, Jared Lee, singing the song Shameless, Georgia's Stella Cole singing DIY, and New Hampshire's Mari singing Fly. Those were the Heat 4 qualifiers, so we're going to be seeing them in the semifinal this coming Monday. Yeah. Um, so, with those four qualifiers, I'm kind of happy for all, like, they all make sense to me. Last week I talked about how much I do like Alan Stone's music and the song he brought. I'm actually a bit surprised to see Mari made it through. Um, I'm surprised too. That song is so like MGP, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, and like she's like a real big personality and a great voice. Like that was, she's you know, right. yeah. I, I would absolutely go to New Hampshire just to see her. Exactly. I would go to New. I want to go shopping with her. I think me and her can have a lot of fun shopping together. Oh my god! Um, right. <laughs> um, and then we have uh, what was it? Massachusetts. I saw that coming. The juries ate that. Like was second it was with the juries. Coming. Yeah. It was always, I mean, like, the staging was very Victor Crone, but, like, it was coming. Yeah, I mean, like, it, it was going to happen because it's a solid vocal performance. Is it the most vocally challenging thing ever? No. Is it the most uh, inventive song ever? No. Mm-hmm. Does it go in a steady artistic direction? I also don't believe so. Yeah. But it made it because it was going to. So, yeah, congratulations, Massachusetts. Yeah, and with, like, Georgia, happy to see that. I wasn't a big mm-hmm. fan of this song, but I like Stella Cole, and from that performance, I'm, like, she I want to I want to see more of her. I just maybe that one song wasn't my, my mm-hmm. thing personally, but I am very glad to see she had gone through. Um, Stella performance. Oh, yeah, totally. Um, and 
yeah, so with all those results, uh, let's go ahead and talk about this week. We already named the states that and the territories that were competing. And um, speaking of all that, uh, ESC Viral says ASC should put all of the um, country ballad songs in one heat so we don't get so many of them to make it through. Um, Maybe that would actually help. Maybe it would, but then again, like I feel like they'll find some kind of way of squeezing a lot of them through, mm -hmm. even if that were the strategy because of the sake of the viewership, as uh, Lily was saying. Yeah, and like honestly, that ties into the person who was the auto qualifier for this week, which was Michigan. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, country ballad. Um, yeah, yeah, a country ballad performed by Ada Leanne. Um, and the song was called Natalie. Uh, I like this one from a lyrical standpoint. I, I, I really like this one. I think it's one of the strongest country ballads of the year, if I'm honest. If I had to, like, assess all the ones that are really similar to this one, especially, like, Sad Girl and Never Like This. Mm -hmm. Like, which felt like the same song to me until I heard all of them back again. I do personally think Natalie's the best out of all of those songs. Lyrically, you're right. Lyrically, it, it, that is the strongest asset. Yeah. Um, the reason I say, because like, lyrically this is basically like, it's a, you know, talking to your ex's girlfriend, but usually those songs tend to be a little more bitter, and this one's more like, you know, good luck, just so you know this is the shady stuff that he's done, um, which I mm -hmm. think is nice to see, and if any genre is going to do that, it's going to be country, yeah. um, and this does it's that well. well, and this does it very well, um, can't be 17. A 17 yeah. year old girl with that just like lyrical emotional maturity that was unbelievable to me so that's oh. what i think like helped her to qualify oh yeah yeah exactly mm -hmm. also you know the, my biggest complaint though is it's so taylor swift and when Very that, and when they brought out the juror to talk to and he's like oh well you know it made me think of taylor swift the first time i heard her I'm like, yeah, it does make me think of Taylor Swift the first time I heard her, too. That was... Not, not you saying, like, you read the instructions. Taylor Swift was, what, 32? That was 16 years ago. I can tell you where I was the first time I ever heard a Taylor Swift song. It was in a weird place. Huh? <laughs> hey, I specifically cannot. Oh, no, I was standing in my Japanese classroom, so it was the first thing in the morning, and this one girl came in blasting it, and I'm like, what is that? And, like, this was back when I was, like, hardcore and pretentious, I only listened to rock music phase. Um, yeah. Well, what an introduction. <laughs> yeah. I just, th th that's why I first heard that song. I mean, like, a Taylor Swift song. I had heard of her, but that was, like, Yeah. Uh, and mm -hmm. I Very mean, take me back Natalie, to high school. But mm -hmm. I just the song is so derivative. Like we've heard three straight albums of one artist of this. We've. Heard, I, I do believe that actually. Yeah, that that is correct. We've heard people trying to be this. She does this very well, but even like the timbre of her voice to me sounded very Taylor Swift. Mm -hmm. Their singing styles are very similar, too. It's her execution when she's speaking the lyrics, singing the lyrics, very, very Taylor. Yeah, and, like, on top of it, I don't, like, I mean, you can you can be inspired by an artist and make music that sounds like that artist. And with this song, it just, it feels like I'm maybe getting Ada Leanne as a, as a um, songwriter or a lyricist. But I'm not getting mm -hmm. her as an overall artist. Um, Ooh, you know, that okay. is true. She is only 17. So just, you know, she probably just needs some time to grow and find her own voice. And it's just, that's one of those things that if you listen to somebody, like, the same music consistently, um, it just takes time to develop who you are as well. And, mm -hmm. you know, have your own distinct identity, especially when you're a 17-year-old girl. Like, yeah. It, it's hard because I'm thinking yeah. back to when I was that age. I didn't have my distinct personality I currently do, but I still had one there that was still stuck in like trying to conform with what I thought mm. needed to be done rather than going off and doing my own thing completely. Um, so I think maybe 
you know, given a couple of years, she could she could really grow into somebody who doesn't sound so inspired by Taylor, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. it, it does make sense now that you put it in that light, yeah. Yeah, um, and then, let me see here. So, yeah, and then uh, going down the list, like, do you want to talk about any other states in particular? I, I mean, like, a part of me wants to talk about, like, a pretty big majority of them, but I'll go ahead and start with Illinois. Uh, Justin Gesso, Lifeline. Um, this is toward my last place. It, it was just an unbelievable melodyless mess to me that I thought was kind of horrendous to my eyes, my ears, and my soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I actually enjoyed this one. Oh, and liked the it? reason why, let I me tell mean, you, yeah, I, I, no. you have to think, when I'm listening to this one, it sounded like church to me. It sounded like that very specific... It, it's, I think you grew up Catholic, so you guys probably don't do this. It <laughs> sounded like a very specific kind of Southern Baptist sound. It sounds really? like very much, there's a point if you, like you can Google search like black church videos. Mm -hmm. And like there's a quality to like the piano parts when he's like kind of focusing more on that. And there's a lot of the shouting and it, it kind of makes me think of that with that kind of like concussive music. That mm -hmm. to you came off as a melodic to me. It makes me think of like jazz chords coming through and a lot of yelling and shouting as you're worshiping. And I got that kind of a feel from this one. Okay. I want, I wonder if that is like part of like maybe Illinois or Chicago culture that he's trying to showcase. Cause if that, if that were the situation clearly, then, then I probably would have a different attitude toward that. But it, it, it felt a little cacophonous, like especially toward the end when he was really getting ambitious with the runs. It's not mm -hmm. that he didn't hit them, but it's just I didn't really feel like they were needed. Yeah, but again, it ties back to that kind of church feel to me. Because that's mm -hmm. when the choir is just going crazy and like, you know, it, it's kind of like it, it has a churchy sound to it. So I enjoy seeing like hearing that sound, um, you know, even though it's not necessarily my thing all the time. I mean, I don't have it ranked very high, but that is the merit I see from that one in particular, is it just made me think of, it, it's again going regional, you know what I mean? Like, it, that is again going to a more regional, distinctly American sound. Well, yeah, like, I, 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 I do see where that has merit now, and I think, I think listening back on it again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it that little token of, um, a chance because because I know that the first time I heard it, I, that was pretty much the only time I heard it, and uh, mm -hmm. it was just not a pleasant sound to me. But who knows? I am just looking at here. Um, ESC yeah. Viral says that they enjoyed uh, Illinois' energy, but can't okay. couldn't really remember the song. Okay, mm. okay. You, you're like okay. Yeah. I can see that where it's like the big performance, and you're enjoying that. Um, mm -hmm. And then so, some more performance than they are song, and that's that's okay. Yeah, then Ariana says that um, I kind of liked Illinois. It stood out. Yeah, I mean, that's probably what it is. It's All like right. A of, you Yo, can remember support, the... support Illinois, you guys. Like, yeah. don't mind my opinion. Support your boy, Justin Gesso. Okay, give me one second because I have some weird thing that popped up. I had to move. Okay, so um, from there, let's go ahead and go on to um, any other ones that, you know, let me choose one. I want to pick out California, your girls. Um, <laughs> the, what do you have uh, to say? What do you have to say about my sweet taboo? Yeah, sweet taboo was the artist, and the song was Keys to the Kingdom. I loved it. Number one, I like a girl group. I'm always here for a girl group, 100%. Um, apart from always being here from a girl group, I love the idea of a Latina girl group because I can't think of one we have in pop music or that we've ever really had in pop music that are like all. Latina like I can think of like you know like I think like, they gave me TLC or 3LW like I'm naming like black girl groups who have like I'm, I'm, these too. I'm definitely getting more of a 3LW than a TLC yeah, I mean, <laughs> but in, 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 a, in a great way in a great way but 3LW I think is like a deeper cut um, tiny. I promise, I promise. yeah I just yeah, want to like, know because there's one girl on there who's like stage name has icp in it i'm like is she an insane clown posse fan i just need to know that i have that itching question in my you, head 
Oh. Maybe we need to interview them and see. Yeah, so uh, you went to ICP. I'm just curious. No judgment. I love Juggalos personally. I think they're awesome. Um, I love their energy. Um, the staging I thought was so cute. It was so Southern California with the stage. Like, it that was, was very LA. It very, very LA. It was very, it was like when you like watch a rap video, like a Snoop Dogg video from back in like the early 90s. The, the backing mm-hmm. dancers were dressed like that. And the how it's like South, is it South Central? I don't know. Los Angeles. I'm like, trying um, to quote, yeah, I'm going to go South Central. I'm quoting rap lyrics in my head. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting specifically regional. I'm saying like, I feel Riverside. I feel Glendale. I feel Bakersfield out there. It's like okay. those folks and that realm of music. I do see it coming from uh, Western LA going into like even a, like a San Diego type sound. But it's quite patriotic for our state. Yeah. And uh, sorry, did you did you have something else you want to say? Because oh, no, I will just, go off. I'm just nodding and saying, yeah, uh-huh. I, I, like, that's what I think of. Like when I think of Latinas from or Latino people from South, like from Southern, LA, like Southern California. That's what I think mm-hmm. of my head. I'm sorry. All good. So, yeah, uh, we competed. We were the second song to compete in Heat 5. You guys, uh, I'm, I'm just going to talk to NBC directly here. NBC, if you're hearing me, um, you did not need to organize a 56-song show. You could have just gone down the street and gotten these girls. I'll be honest. We have, like, if things go correctly, California does have a chance to win, and I'm really not trying to be biased about my state. I really want other states to do well, and I don't really want California to win because I want to see other states do well. But we are at least in the top 10 when it comes to quality of the song, when it comes to contemporary nature, catchiness of the lyrics, when it comes to the hook, we are pulling pretty far ahead. Yeah. And I am not writing off the possibility that we can win. It would just be really shitty because it's kind of like, oh, sorry, I shouldn't have said, I shouldn't have said <laughs> that. But um, it's not going to be great. It's, yeah. it's not going to be the best situation for us because it's going to come off as arrogance, definitely, if we do win in a California-based studio. So I hope they do really, really well, and I hope they have a successful career after this, but a different state I, or territory, I feel like, should win the contest just for the sake of um, uh, longevity. Okay, I definitely 100% see that, and um, I'm just thinking, so, like, is California going to be, like, the Italy, then, of American song contests, where they consistently do well, but don't necessarily always win? I, I more so see us as the Sweden. So okay, it's just like Swedes. we do so well <laughs> enough that people hate us for it. <laughs> okay, so we're going to present you. Awesome. I love that. Yeah, probably. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, Sweet Taboo, I just, fantastic. Um, the rap was good. Like, every element of this was perfectly executed. Um, that song sounds like a mango covered in like tahine and chile <laughs> like it, it it it's just such a california it's specifically like a californian type sound yeah. that i'm so happy we were able to recreate it's basically a folk song and it's yeah. gonna do well <laughs> yeah no 100 percent. like um i have some tahine downstairs and i do have some mangoes so i know what i'm gonna be doing after the stream is over i know oh, yeah uh-huh. <laughs> um so yeah like that was one? that one were there any other ones you wanted to talk about kind of for, for me yeah New Mexico, I quite liked Drop. It wasn't, um, it's it's not my genre or flavor of rap that I typically get into, but it was when it was like 2011, mm-hmm. when like Rack City came out. What was that other song? I, I guess like um, Ass by Drake. It's very like a 2011 kind of like. That wasn't mm, Drake. General American How dare sound. you? That was not Drake. That was Big Sean. That was Big Sean? Big Sean fe- featuring Nicki Minaj. They have. They, they have the same flow. Like, let's be honest, they have the exact same flow. I mean, flow. I personally <laughs> prefer Big Sean um, because he's just so, like, ridiculous. But that's a whole other story. <laughs> we'll, we'll do a dissertation on Big Sean in a later stream. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. But yeah, I, Drop was I really enjoyed Drop. American Samoa. This song, I'm really happy to see that it got second place in the jury at one point, but it deserved to qualify above um, some above the qualifier, in mm-hmm. my opinion. Like I, I, like, I think in this specific heat, American Samoa was the most powerful one for me, and it was because it's just the most full package when it comes to representation, yes. um, song quality. I mean, vocal ability was questionable. Like, yeah. I, I get that. Like, the vocals weren't all there, but 
it, it was just so good to me. And it's also the other kind of like half of my representation. One half you have California, the other half you have Islander. And I feel like the Islander side pulled just a little bit more of the weight. But that's, yeah. again, my personal taste. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, I knew who Tennille was going into the contest. Um, because she's, like, if you do, like, um, fan contests, she's a staple if you're choosing anywhere in uh, the Pacific. Um, so I kind of mm. knew her from my thing of doing, you know, of doing fan contest. And I wasn't disappointed. Like, I was like, this is great. This is good. I mean, honestly, yeah, the vocal wasn't there all the time. Um, yeah. The problem is you could also see in her face when she knew she wasn't going to be able to hit the note. Um, and she kind of pulls back yep. and you get to that visual like cue on her face. But there was, you know, beautiful staging, beautiful song. The production was good. Um, and, you know, we got our Islander representation. And I think this is like a strong version of that because last week you said you didn't want any more of the typical Islander sound. And she didn't give that to us. No. As a matter of fact, I'm really happy that she was able to combine reggae, R&B with a Pacific like island sound. She didn't just reduce the song to basically like a Jason Mraz type yeah. offshoot, you know, which is something that I'm so tired of hearing from artists who look like me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I'm, I'm just done with it. Like I'm done with the ukulele sound. I'm sorry, guys. It's been like... 40 years we can we can try something else american samoa did tanel actually took that risk and she did relatively well and i'm happy to see that she did well because she deserved it and the song is that good it is i believe in my top five of the year oh yeah that was that was definitely up there for me as well um i just want to shout out ariana saying american samoa has such a great uplifting vibes a hundred percent like the song sounded yes. uplifting i mentioned illinois sounds like church um i'd say like american samoa would be a sound i would associate more with like a funeral but in a positive funeral like a, mm -hmm. a funeral where you're celebrating a life rather than mourning a loss and mm -hmm. i think that ties in nicely from what i understand of like the samoan culture as well yeah it's, it's not a message we get often either like when it comes to message songs this is one it's it's a relatively rare message about like death and reincarnation in a sense that's not very common this is it's very rooted in um pacific beliefs and that's not something that uh, we see in Eurovision or, like, have seen in the American Song Contest yet. So I'm really happy that we we're able to see that showcase. I mean, we've seen it from yeah. Eurovision a couple of times. Really? Wait, uh, uh, what are they doing? I think I forget. Think Portugal, Ujardim. Oh. I will defend Ujardim for every day. Telemovic oh, kind of has yeah. a similar vibe. Yeah. Um, and then Saudade Saudade. This is like a Portuguese. Is, is American Samoa going to be the Portugal? You know, kind of giving us a reflective oh celebratory. I don't even understand how much I would love that. I mean, I'm down with that. Yes. I, I'm just saying to think of like someone's going to bring us something that's artistic, that's well liked, and mm. that just like well liked within the fandom, maybe not overall. Um, I'm just thinking more and more. Like Portugal is that niche, they're that artsy, and they do well whenever they decide to, but they don't care about them. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, but I, and of them, another thing I know about American Samoan culture is they uh, tend to be very competitive. So that's a good sign, though. Too. Mm. Um, Great sign. So, yeah. And then we're going to go ahead and go over to um, New Mexico. Because uh, you, you mentioned New Mexico. I just want to touch on that one real quick. Yeah. I liked the visual. It was giving me very late 90s, early 2000s rap video. I specifically said Hype Williams in my notes. Um, as I was watching with the fish islands and the alien stuff, very like Missy Elliott esque. Um, so I did enjoy that. A little bit, yeah. I, I definitely got it like a miss, especially in the production. Yeah, feel very Missy. Yeah. yeah. So I was into Cali Soul. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just like looking at other ones to touch on. I guess we can talk North about North Carolina. I would have liked the song more. If he wasn't just staring so dead cold into the camera. <laughs> if it was a radio contest, I would have loved it. It was a visual side to it. It's like, honestly, you know, here's the thing. It's a visual and audio experience. We want to have a um, overall package. We had a great song. Um, mm. And I think wearing a cowboy hat. While styling wise made sense, maybe made connecting with the camera harder. Or, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know, because he seems like a songwriter from his postcard more than mm -hmm. an artist. Like a, you know, you know what I mean by that? 
Um, yeah. He's more known for his songwriting, so he's behind the stage. Maybe he was nervous, and that kind of was like a... Whenever I, like, whenever I wash my dog, she's afraid of water, so she stiffens up and stares straight ahead. Um, oh. So I don't know if it was kind of a, a response or something she would do, or she's just like, you know. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what I, I, I thought. It was like, oh, he does not look comfortable. Deer in the headlights? I don't know. Um, but that was well, like, I mean, like at least vocally, one hundred percent there. Yeah, it's just the the visual element yeah. to it. Like if that was a um, like a radio song, I'd be like, yeah, let me put that on my Spotify and listen to that when I'm on my uh, country playlist. It's better than fire it up. Like uh, no, <laughs> we're not gonna fire it up. We're not. We're not gonna fire it up. Fire it Love up. you, Montana. I wrote a book about your state. But anyways, North Carolina, yeah. Solid vocal. Solid vocal. The visual was a little weird, but I do see why he did well. And, like, touching on Idaho real quick, because he also was the country guy with the guitar. Um, the machine. And weird. Like this, I don't know if he did, was uncomfortable on the stage, too. Um, he really made me think of, like, Bob Dylan, but with a better voice. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, or, like, it was very, like, 60s protest um what's it called protest folk music which i'm into sometimes i just want to listen to that kind of thing but i like for this i wasn't in the mindset for that yeah. and i, I, I kind of got like a simon and garfungal minus melody plus grit okay i can see that i can see like, that that, that was the sound that i received yeah but Simon and Garfunkel have the harmonies, and that's what makes them so good. <laughs> yeah, that's that, that's why I said like, well, I mean like melody and harmony. Like we weren't getting that with this song, but I mean like this is the first performance of a first representative song for a state. I'm not trying to like have too high expectations for it, but yeah. I, I I do see some inspiration. Yeah, I'm just looking here. Um, the other because we kind of touched on everybody. No so reason to thank Guam. Up. There was no reason to thank Guam. No, there was no reason. I mean, like, culture, 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 I guess. I mean, like, when if one Pacific Island does well, then the other one has to, then the other one has to sink in the ocean. So, <laughs> it is what it is. The thing with Guam is like it made me dance like a white lady at a jazz festival who doesn't want to spill her wine. Like you know what exactly, I mean? but like yeah, way. in your head. <laughs> and like that's that's what Guam was giving me as a song, and I was into it. I was like, yes, you know, you, like, you know, like <laughs> that kind of a thing. Um... <laughs> It was so good. I like it. was a vibe. So, like it was uh-huh. a whole vibe. I kind of just wanted to sit on a beach. It made me want to go back to Guam, which I'm anything that makes me go, oh, I should go to Guam again. That's positive. This should be the first song in the playlist. It's like Guam tourist board. Um, the other two we did, well, the two of the other ones we didn't really talk about were Vermont and Missouri. I don't remember these. Vermont annoyed me missouri kind of bored me <laughs> missouri i literally in my note says i'm writing this after the song is over and all i remember is her outfit i remember the circle i remember the pink circle <laughs> okay there's a pink circle and she had like a pink long line blazer with a pink uh sequin bra top bandeau bra and like a pink pantsuit right yeah, that's what she was wearing. Yeah, it, it felt very country concert. I don't remember the song. Um, Vermont, I remember the voice. I remember thinking, someone can, someone come get their dad. I think that, I don't know where he got this song from, but I don't think it would have been a good song to showcase his talents. Um, I think that, honestly... I would like if I if he was auditioning for like a show like The Voice, I would put him with the song Unstoppable by Foxy Shazam, and I think he would crush that. I would like I think he'd be really really good at that song in particular. Um, so I was thinking something with a little more energy, a little more oomph to it musically, because he has a good voice, and it's just like what is the song? It doesn't, it's not showing off what yeah. makes you you, and like the styling was off, and just like no. Um, See, I I think he has some, like, I think there is oomph, there was, like, power in his performance, but the thing is, the song is so unmemorable, and it's not deserving of the oomph, mm -hmm. that it just absolutely flatlines, and it misses the point completely. 
it's kind of sad because I do hear his voice and I do hear there is a lot of potential there, but this song is, it, I, like, there's no way I'm going to be able to remember it. Yeah, no. I'm sorry, I'm just going to make hammer a bit so I can read these comments a little better. Um, no, I agree. Um, and then I'm looking here at, um, the last one we haven't mentioned, Marilyn Cisco. Um, yeah, Cisco, I, what was the name of the song? Dragons, I don't remember. It's this. Up. Okay, thank you. Um, this was very Baltimore. Um, it, it, it was a lot of Baltimore. Um, I don't know. I, that probably isn't descriptive for people who've never been to Baltimore. Um, <laughs> like, okay, I haven't been to Baltimore. What, what makes a really Baltimore sound? Um, okay, so the number one, the beat is very, multi- very much Baltimore Club. We talked before about how DC has go-go music as kind of like their sound. Yeah. When you go out to the club in DC, you hear go-go if you're at a good club. Um, Baltimore, some people go up to Baltimore for clubbing too. And that beat is like very much Baltimore house music. Um, I'm trying to think. Wop. There, there's kind of like a dubstepy. I, I, I have an I have an example. The song Wop. The sample in Wop is a Baltimore House song. Okay. So that's a Baltimore okay. House. Okay. Now, now if I feel a bit... at the, If you look yeah. up this the original song, um, and you listen to it, you can hear the Baltimore House aspects that we got in Cisco's entry. I'm like I was just trying to think of like a of, of a song that had that that everyone would know. Um, but yeah, like that would probably be the one I would say tying to that the most. Um, mm-hmm. Like, so it's not a sound that I think you would hear elsewhere. Because I remember mm-hmm. kind of like hearing that in WAP and going, oh, wait, that's very Baltimore. It's like how like Louisiana Bounce had a big thing in hip hop music like five, six years ago. When like Big Free, like mm-hmm. everyone outside of Louisiana, like New Orleans was learning about people like Big Frida, who she's fantastic. I love her to pieces. Um, it kind of was like that sort of a thing. So, mm-hmm. again, this is a very Baltimore sound. Um, I also just want to say Blue Crab is the best crab. And so those gloves they handed Kelly Clarkson uh, made 100% sense to me because Blue Crab is the best crab. <laughs> That's the tea, babe. Sorry. Um, That's the tea, babe. Yeah. I uh, just want to kind of go through comments that we had while we were talking about everyone. Um... Oh, yeah. Guam did not have to be last. No, it did not. Uh, Missouri was right there. Uh, Vermont was right there. Idaho, you know, could be down there in the bottom ish, too. Um, let me see here. Um, Ariana. There was. Lena Headland Circle. Yes, she brought Lena Headland Circle to the stage from Missouri. Lena Headland Circle. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Chris, no, Krista had that shipped from <laughs> Stockholm. <laughs> was like i got this i, I got handle. this we'll just yeah. mail it over um <laughs> it's like i literally do have this so no no effort let me go grab it real quick all right um esc viral vermont was a good song uh had a good voice but the song was trash yes mm. <laughs> we touched mm-hmm. on that i hard. agree i agree um ariana again cisco had banger Graphic effects and choreography. Yes, he did. Like you knew I, I there was that. there was visual branding throughout the whole entire performance, which is the dragon. Mm-hmm. Um, and ESC viral says Cisco felt like a mess. It didn't really know how to feel watching it. Again, with that, I see that too with all the graphics and everything going on, and like there was dancers <laughs> and it kept cutting. Yeah, it, 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 it was like let's put everything on this stage. Like, everything on the stage, it was like, how do I phrase this? I like chaos sometimes. And that was very chaotic. So I can see how it's messy, but also visually striking at the same time. That's what very I Maryland chaos. <laughs> it's my aesthetic. Um, being <laughs> messy, but visually a lot happening. <laughs> Maryland chaos should be someone's, like, drag name. Oh, my gosh. It would... You know who's from Baltimore? Because you, you mentioned drag names. Mm. I'm just thinking John Waters. Like, that's white Baltimore culture. It's like John Waters. Because um, mm. all his movies take place in Baltimore. Um, 
So is the ball. <laughs> if you want to be a divine <laughs> tribute act, I think the name yeah. Maryland Chaos yeah. works. Um, <laughs> I think that would be fantastic. I'm gonna uh, that down. Because I, I would just do all her looks from all Bob Waters movies. What is he, Bob? Ignore me. John Waters. Why did he say Bob Waters? Why did you let me do that? Uh, but yeah, it, this... It's because you're pulling these names out of a hat. I mean, like, single syllable first names with English origin, right? <gasps> Ooh, okay, yeah. John. John Waters. Okay, so. Um, anyways. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of how to phrase things now. Right. Uh, that's it. Um, I saw was Georgia said asked us earlier. Oh, no. Georgia said had, had asked us earlier um, out of all the songs, who would be our top three now that we've heard all of things. Wow, okay. Just put us on the spot like that, why don't you? Um, all right. I, I, I can answer that question. Okay, so my top three would have to be Virginia, American Samoa, Pennsylvania. Okay. So, okay. yeah, over you, Bob Mirzaki, um, yeah, Tenel Full Circle, and then, uh, what was the last one I mentioned? Bree Stevens, Plenty Love. Okay, sorry. Yeah, what? <laughs> um, For me, I'm going to go West Virginia. I think that was such an excellent, excellent song. The Virginias. Um... See, Virginia just barely misses out for me. I'm not going to really? put her through. I'm going to put Kansas instead over her. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I'm going to say... Washington. Washington is so good. Washington, made it is, so, and Washington is very much my thing. Um, mm. So yeah, those would be my, my standouts personally. So, yeah, for me, Washington, Kansas, and um, West Virginia were my fav three favorites. We'll have to, like, do a rank later. Like bottom, top, like, third, second, first. That's your order? Yeah. West yep. Virginia. We have the Virginias in our top three. Yeah. I like West Virginia a lot. It's, it's me too. there. It's up. I'm just talking about going to visit now. It's very pretty. <laughs> and the rent's cheap. Or cheaper than living out where I live. High pollution, um, but I mean, like, we all make do. Yeah, just reading other people's tops. ESC virals are Kansas, Texas, and New Jersey. Georgios Papadopoulos is. Are... New Jersey's really good. That's on Grown Me a Lot. Oh, yeah. Georgia, uh, yeah. Um, sorry. Kansas is great. I'm sorry. Like, we're, we're Kansas gonna, is great. We get along real well there with Kansas. I think that's at least surprising for Kansas. Like, wow. And then Georgios uh, Papadopoulos says... Oklahoma, Texas, and California are his favorites, which are all Yay! all big. Thank you for representing us. But yeah, Oklahoma is going to do insanely well, and it is because of the appeal of K-pop, first of all. But it's also because of Alexa, yeah. generally. <laughs> yeah, um, people like that sort of a thing happening. Mm -hmm. So now we have to talk about our criteria. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. Um, I wanted to just touch on Madrid. Was a bar it was Madrid this week, right? It was Madrid, I believe, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, Madrid. We finally got to hear Cypress live ish. It's going to be I, good. Okay. I, I don't, I'll be I'm on, not worried. I'll not on back and watch the Madrid party, so okay. talk to me about it. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I'm more confident in the vocal now. I think I have Cypress down as a qualifier. And oh. I just wanted to touch on that because it's kind of like the. You one think you have Cypress as a qualifier? <laughs> I'm more confident in having Cypress as a qualifier. I don't remember. I I can pull up my list of qualifiers if you want me to. But, like, I don't imagine it not. My sister likes it. So I'm going to imagine it's going to qualify. Because my sister's, like, super casual Eurovision fan. Like, she just basically watches the final and that's it. Um, so that's a good sign. Yeah. Like that. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good sign. Um, we got Azerbaijan live, finally. It was good. I was confident he could sing it. Um, that song, I don't think, might is going to qualify. Um, I think it's the weakest of our sad boys. Um, so that's that one. And we got Switzerland live for the first time. 
it was sung like I thought it was going to be sung, which is well. Not Wait, didn't he take his socks off? <laughs> yes, he did. Uh, like some, like it didn't even seem like he was performing at the time no. because I saw. I think I remember seeing like Urs and a number of like the other artists like behind him, just kind of yes. looking around, like doing. Like, Why are you taking off your socks? Like. God only knows why. This is not the place for that, <laughs> sir. Put the socks back on. You're, you're at a Madrid pre-party for Eurovision. You're standing in front of the people who you're going to be competing against. Flash, yeah. the only people like you'll see like at the most international event you'll probably ever be at. What was the reason? <laughs> Maybe it's a preview of the staging. Is it a culture thing? Like, <laughs> I don't I, know. I feel like I'm missing something here. I don't know. What if... Dutch cold, Dutch Swiss culture is taking off your socks. Maybe you didn't want to get the stains dirty. I don't know, um, but it happened. So, do you want to go over our ranking criteria? Um, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you guys, um, well, first of all, we're going to be talking about the songs from Bulgaria, Cyprus, Greece, Malta, Portugal, San Marino, and Italy, finally. But basically, when we talk about these songs, we're going to be reviewing the lyrical content. So, how well do we feel like the lyrics were written and executed? Second item, production and genre. So, basically, what do we notice um, in the assembly of the song? What genre do we think it fits in and from a practical standpoint? Unique elements, so basically that is item three. It, it is an assessment of what we think sets this song apart from other songs in the lineup. How well can it be performed live is a question that uh, we are answering more and more concisely as we uh, have more pre-parties to look back on. Mm -hmm. Would we stream the song is the fifth item, simple yes or no. And finally, would the song qualify for the final, which would kind of go into our personal qualifiers, our personal rankings uh, before the actual live semifinals. So with that said, you want to go ahead and kick it off with the lyrics for Bulgaria? Um... Right. Bulgaria. <laughs> it's such generic rocker music lyrically. Like, what is the song even really about? Lyrics. I've never been more confused. And it's it like about? six words long. It's like, why am I so confused? <laughs> and like, you don't, I don't know. And the music video doesn't help because it's like a lady who's walking, but she's also an, a robot. And there's a kid playing video games? Is, is he, like, controlling? A kid playing a dirty-ass <laughs> Xbox controller that you could tell, like, <laughs> he's using for gaming. Like, this isn't even one that they specifically designated for the music video. No, that is his controller. <laughs> he brought that from home. Yeah, he, he did. He brought that from home. And <laughs> I... Okay. Lyrically, again, what is this song about? I am so confused. You, you ever feel like, okay, you ever have, like, a dream that's, like, super intense, and then you wake up, but you can't, can't really remember what that is? That's what the lyrics feel like, where it's just, like, <laughs> like oh God, something that's happened. That's a perfect summary. That's a perfect summary for it. <laughs> it it's like, sense. something happened, and it was intense, but I have no idea what it was. What am I supposed to do? And, like, the dream when you wake up was, like, I guess, to write intention. By Intelligent Music Project and represent Bulgaria at 2022's Eurovision. Um, yeah. See, and like the lyrics last year from Bulgaria were some of my favorite, probably my lyrical winner. Like, Growing Up Is Getting Old had some of the best lyrics I've seen like in Eurovision. Yeah. Going into this one, it, it feels like you, you remember those videos how it would be like someone like read something off that was translated through Google Translate like 70 million times? Yeah. That's what this feels like well. Yeah, no. A hundred percent. Um, if we want to talk about genre and production, my note was competent. This is competent. It's performed competently. It is a song yes. by middle-aged men performed competently. This is what I call a genre called divorced dad rock, um, which is, you know what? There's nothing wrong with being a dad. There's nothing wrong with being divorced. But, like, if you're that divorced dad who's trying to win the kids back and you think you need to do it by being cool because in your apartment the only furniture is a broken lawn chair, this is the kind of music you would make. Dang, that that divorce really ripped everything out of that man in which case. No prenup. <laughs> no prenup. 
<laughs> and child support. No, that's exactly what this is, though. That's exactly what this feels like. I just feel like I just walk into an apartment, and it's like the window's open, but you just see a lawn chair, yes. and you're like, all right. <laughs> I mean, I, I knew someone else who had a lawn chair in their apartment who wasn't a divorced dad. Um, but it adds to the essence. <laughs> exactly. It's like one of those things. Oh, like, cool. this is the apartment of a divorced man. This is the melody of a divorced man. <laughs> well, I mean, there isn't really a melody, is the thing. Like, there isn't, like... I mean, the fact that I can hum it now is probably only because it was, like, one of the first songs. And we've had no choice but basically to hear it this entire time if we do anything Eurovision-related. So, but, okay, one thing. If, if we can go ahead and move on, to, like, segue from production no, genre no, no, to no, unique no, elements. I have it's, to. I well, just song, thought... It's... All pre-chorus. This entire song is pre-chorus. Yeah. Every verse, every chorus, every pre-chorus is pre-chorus. Yeah. No, we said before, like last week I said forever choruses. Um, this isn't a forever chorus. This is a forever pre-chorus instead, like you said. Um, yeah. And I'm sorry, the reason I started laughing is as I thought, instead of like the slogan, the sound of beauty, I thought the sound of divorce. And just... I'm gonna. I'm going to write that somewhere and then bring it in the arena with. <laughs> I'll write it on my forehead. Bulgarian flag. Oh my god! I just. That's all I can think of now. So I'm lost. Um, <laughs> I haven't laughed like this on a stream since the the uh, results of last year. Um. Right. <laughs> so. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, what was the, the next Sing item? Lolly, I... It's uh, it's it's all chorus for like unique elements. There aren't none. There's competence. Is that a unique element? No. Okay. <laughs> How well can it be performed live? Sure. It, it can no, be performed we've live. We've seen it live twice. It was good live, actually. It was fine. In London, it was fine. It was fine. I think that they sounded good in London. Like, like, good. I mean, they still sound like divorced dads. Um, okay, so my sister, right? She mm -hmm. has a friend who, like, is younger but was, like, dating this old guy. And my sister, when she saw this song come on, she was like, oh, that's, like, insert man's name here's band. Um, I don't think I'm on it. And... She didn't mean it as a compliment. That was derogatory. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, like, they're giving off that essence so strongly, though. It's embarrassing. It, you can <laughs> smell it from across Europe, across the Atlantic Ocean, and the continental U.S. Like, I, I can smell it from here. <laughs> I, it's not, it's not hitting. I, is that a unique element? I'm trying right. to think of unique I elements. I can't think of any other than horrible stuff. Right. That's just mean. <laughs> okay, I don't have my scissors with me. I'm just going to eat my plasma here. That's how I feel. Okay, put that away. <laughs> um, right, so then what's next on the list? What's, what comes after now? Um, uh, would we stream the song? No. No. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. And the next question is, does it qualify? No. No. I'm trying to think, like, wh where would there be a path? You know, like, what what ahead of them isn't a dead end. Oh, uh, what city are they in? Two, Does it no, matter? one, um, semi one. Uh, yeah, they're in semi one. Um, no way. There is. Then there's actually no way. I mean, I can see if the jury for if Albania's jury yes. is the same as it is for Festival of Ikingas half the time. We'll get some points. Is it a zero? Maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah, they'll probably get like an eight from like the Albanian delegation. Okay, it, oh, all right. So like I think I just pictured if they do qualify, it would be because they really leaned into like an anime style staging. Like lean into like some kind of like Bebelni Belarus 2018 Junior Eurovision kind of staging and maybe we could get a little bit closer it's not guaranteed, and I can almost guarantee that it's not going to happen. If this qualifies, I'm going to guess the divorce rate in Europe is through the roof. Like, I can't. Yeah. 
There's a lot there's a lot more divorced dads out there than I guess wine moms if this makes it through. Um, if if they qualify, you'll you'll see video footage of me being arrested outside the <laughs> arena. I wouldn't want to get arrested in Italy personally, especially when I'm on vacation and supposed to be enjoying myself. Um, Neither would I. So let's let's work on not getting to that point, everyone. Exactly. Okay? So let's <laughs> let's segue over to Cyprus, um, and we're gonna talk about another flag um, that I guess our friend Jordan carries. I, how many flags are you bringing? Don't spoil um, it. I'm, I, I think a couple more might pop up while we're on the stream, so I'm going to just... You'll see it. You will see it. Okay, so um, the song is Ella by Andrew Machi, and she's representing Cyprus this year. Let's talk about lyrics, I guess. Um, lyrics don't matter. They don't they matter. Don't matter. They, they don't matter. They come here, come here, be in my arms. You could be the one. Like it's it's not trying to be anything other than just like a Eurovision dance jam with yeah. like cool vibes. Yeah, good. This, That's why. <laughs> lyrically, this is giving me very much like mythological seduction. Like mm -hmm. she could be a nymph in the woods, or like a siren calling you to death. Um, yeah. I don't know if I'm just going that way because she's Greek. Um, and this sounds very Greek to me, hopping in the production a bit. This sounds like it's from the part of the world it's from. Um, and Very Panic that, Records. It's a very Panic song. Yeah. Um, and it sounds like a little mythological, like I said before. It, it, it all mm -hmm. ties together to make it very much Mediterranean islands. Mm -hmm. And breezy breezes. And yeah, it's not necessarily what I would want from Cyprus personally, um, but it's a vibe and it's, you know, it's doing that because it doesn't seem like we're going to be getting things that sound very Greek from Greece. So if Cyprus wants to pick up the mantle. Not in the recent future because of what Europe did to Oniromu. I still don't understand why. Well, I mean, also what Greece and Yana did to Oniromu, but I mean, like, Anyways, like that that'll be a topic of rage for another day, you guys, because I have a lot to say about Greece. But we are receiving finally a Greek-ish, more so Greek than anything else put out by the Hellenics since 2018, I'd say. Exactly, and it's nice to have that vibe back. Because, you know, mm -hmm. I've been cooped up in the house. I want to go lay on a Greek beach. <laughs> with just some Greek girls like on like <laughs> on like a little wooden platform as you all just stare in one direction together. Yeah, like it's very Is that not the vibe. Like who yeah. doesn't want Or like the sundresses with the big brimmed hats. Oh, I love that. That's me. So oh, summery. Yeah, it takes you to like summer on a beach, like somewhere nice, you know. Oh my, oh, my friends and I went to the Tulip Festival. It was like what I should have been wearing at the Tulip Festival. I want to go to Tulip Festival. Yeah, like this is you can go pick tulips, and like my friends all dressed really cute. Um, from uh, Tulip Festival. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm no, now I'm upset. So I should have I should have made that outfit. It would have <laughs> been so perfect for the Tulip Festival. Um, right. Anyways, yeah. Like anyway. Like, anyways, like I said, with the genre and stuff, it's very much. I want it like. It's very much mythological to me, and it's like a mythological seduction vibe. Mm hmm It's like happening. It's like you took a shot of absinthe, and you decided to like go to a Greek beach. You know, very like mythological. Like you're starting to see, like the old spirits come out of the rocks <clears throat> and stuff like that. Very, very ancient Greece. Yeah, very much so. It's not like anything. Mm -hmm. it, that's what it feels like to me too. Um, and then. Uh, Point number four is, can it be performed live? Yes, it can. You know the answer to that question. I yeah. do not. It can be. Uh, it's, it can be. Like, I think, I think there was a... It can be. It can perform, thank, perform live. Thank God um, it can. Yeah. Uh, do we stream it? Yes. I, yes. I've never skipped it. My never. sister likes it. This is one of my sister's favorites. Um, Actually. Like, there's a couple, and she really liked this one. She's like, well, oh, listen to this. So I, you know, my sister's also very casual. But she has it on her playlist now. We are on the same page. And then, um, do we think it's going to qualify? I said yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I have I, I really, really hope it does because uh, my semifinal two ticket, I'm actually right behind the green room and I'm going to be like holding this flag up as high as I can. By the way, guys, try to spot me in the audience if you can. If you can. I don't know if the camera's going to be on me at all, but I'm going to be in the green room area just waving the flag as hard as I can until my neck breaks. So that's that. I mean, if that's the way you want to go out, that's the way you want to go out. Why not? Yeah, I want to go out. And yeah. talking about going out, that's when you die. And you want to die together in the stadium with yeah. Cyprus qualifying. So let's talk about Greece's song Die Together by Amanda Giorgiardi. Uh, Giorgiardi Tenfjord. You, Did you like that segue? Way, <laughs> I'm, I'm proud of that one. I'm I'm proud of that one. I would have sleep. I need to sleek it up a bit. Get a tight five. Yeah. <laughs> so lyrics. I'm in your back seat. This this yeah. lyrically is a it's a good song. Like it's a good pleading song. I don't know if pleading is the right word I want to use, but I, I like lyrics. I, I like them a lot. They're very evocative. Like you said, you were I was yeah. in the back seat. You're driving me crazy. Like that's a mood. That's like. Mm -hmm. Someone's driving in the front of the car. They're kind of being annoying, and you guys are arguing. I'm immediately there. I'm immediately seeing her in the back of the car with her knees up, kind of hitting the driver's seat. Like, you mm -hmm. know, kind of like laying so that they're pushed into the back of the driver's seat because she's irritated. And her arms are across her chest, her hair is a little frazzled. I see it immediately. We need sweater. No, I don't, I don't know what she's wearing. I don't really care about the outfit. I just see the body language. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I do see that. Yeah. immediately getting that, um, you're in full, you're all, you're fully in control, like, just like you always are. That's like, you're the one in power. That's the one driving, like, that's making me behave like this. It's like, it comes off, it's, it comes off as a very toxic relationship, but like in a way that's very dramatic. Um, I don't because most toxic relationships are dramatic. It's like a toxic relationship where you're recognizing now, like you're putting the pieces together, that this is gonna fall absolutely apart. But it's only you who's seeing it's gonna fall apart. Like the people who are in the relationship, like people outside of it, don't see this as like a problem. Like it's like circles. People on the outside of that look at that relationship and the song circles and go, "No, you two need to be." Mm -mm far mm -hmm. apart die together is more people looking at her like oh they're a nice couple but as it turns out there's like you're sitting in the back seat and th th there's there's so many things left unsaid that you're come you've come to a point where it's just like if we die together that's the best situation yeah if we die together you know what at least i don't have to worry about going, going to someone else it's like it's weird it's like this come and there's like this country song that has a similar vibe to it, but that song is more like I'm so in love with you and this relationship's not gonna end. Um it's called Better Dig Two by the band yep. Perry. Ooh, you want angry country lady oh lyrics? That's like I think the opening <laughs> line is like I was I said till death do us part and I meant it. So oh, if you die before I do, I'm gonna tell the grave digger he better dig two. So it's kind of like a murder-suicide pact combined with just, like, if you ever cheat on me, if you ever do anything that makes this marriage not work, um, it's over for both of us. But if you also die before I am, it's going to be a broken heart that kills me. It's kind Honestly, of like though, it's hard to find songs that are just that honest with, like, the raw emotion nowadays. Mm -hmm. Amanda yeah. does it. Amanda, right Amanda well. does it beautifully. And like on mm -hmm. that chorus, he's like, you know, it's been a lovely f year for you. But like, that's what they say. That's what the people say. But it's been a mm -hmm. hell of a year for us. And we've been living in fear. It, it's just, it's very, very it's very beautifully put very together. Beautiful. And it's very, mm -hmm. it ties in wonderfully with the production um, that's on this one. Because at the beginning of the song, you have a vocal tract and you have a backing vocal tract that has a uh, vocoder on it. And that's it. There's no real instrumentation there. It's just... It's so simple. It's so simple, which helps carry the message of the lyrics forward so well. Yeah, and then on certain parts of the song, you get 
a combination of that, uh, like you get a second backing track on the vocoder. And so she's kind of working her own harmonies, but that vocoder adds more texture to it. And definitely. And with that being said, like I think the song it reminds me the most of is the, is Hide and Seek by Emojin Heap. Just because that whole song is basically a cappella with a vocoder effect on the vocal. Um, I'm not saying it's like strictly just like that, but that beginning part does that for me. And also mm-hmm. at the beginning part, it works for me and it keeps my attention. It's not like Denmark, where I find myself bored partway through the ballad bit. On this one, I find myself engaged and I think it's that vocoder that's happening and the adding mm-hmm. of additional harmonies and then sparse production before the full instrumentation kind of goes whoop, and brings it all in. Also, the very necessary silences, in my opinion. There is a couple times when it just goes silent for a couple seconds. And I am, and I'm just drawn in by the next part that much more. This was mm-hmm. created by like a very competent sound engineer, and yeah. it very well might be Amanda who has that capacity. And it ties into the lyrics well because when you're in, if, like you're in this kind of relationship, there's going to be awkward silences where like, what are you going to say? Uh, it uh-huh. all works together really well. It's like, it's great. Can you believe I used to hate this song? I used to. Yeah, hate it. I still remember, and I was like, wow, I guess you're wrong, but that's okay. I was um, wrong. I, I was wrong. I'm sorry. It's all right. Yeah, um, as far I as the elements go, the production we tied in beautifully with that. It's just very striking, mm-hmm. and it's very arresting. And if this this song's gonna have, if the staging is not together, then the things that we praise it for with those those silences, those moments of bringing you in with just the single, like the two simple vocoder backing tracks. If the staging isn't together, it's going to lose people. Mm-hmm. You, you cannot Belgium 2018 this. No. <laughs> Please. Don't. No, you can't. Like, keep it simple, but keep it elegant. Mm-hmm. You know? It can be your little black dress. Well, um, I mean, even don't keep it simple the whole time, because, like, toward the end, the song builds so much, and then you get that moment, you know? Oh, yeah. I really hope they do something really, really, like, crystalline with that one second where it's like when she goes like super high and it's like the entire chorus of her voice on the vocoder like that i feel like needs to have a big winning moment exactly yeah um and then we have daniel theo um theophanos um yeah theophanos i'm gonna guess your greek uh from your name do you Mm -hmm. think however it's competing in the same space with the netherlands and sweden it is competing in that space, but it's yeah. distinctly different. This, mm-hmm. Those three songs you mentioned are all in that same that same area of, um, of mood. They're all Email, sad. I guess. Yeah, girl, sad pop girl. Yeah, kind of those kind of songs. Um, and in that space, um, there's a little something for everybody. If you're someone who mm-hmm. leans more heavy towards a pop aspect, you're going to be more attracted to the Netherlands or Sweden. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're someone who, you know, this is a pop song still, but this is more symphonic of a pop song. So if you're drawn mm-hmm. to something like a James Bond-esque theme, um, you want that big sweeping sound that goes with it. This is what's going to drive, like, this song is going to be one that attract, that you're attracted to in that situation. I don't really think yeah, and I feel like it's going to have just a feel for that, too. And we don't really have any other songs that kind of sound like James Bond themes, kind of, this mm-hmm. year. And like every year we get like one of them that does decently well. And I think that's a, a positive there. Um, yeah, and like, like you said, Ed, you're not so much a big fan of Grease. No, don't apologize. Everyone's welcome to their own opinion. Um, mm-hmm. I, I find myself drawn to this because I do like that James Bond-esque ballad um that we get regularly and i also do like like i had mentioned it makes me think of like my notes are kind of weird because lyrically i have um makes me think of a female version of i walk the line by johnny cash and it also makes me think of hide and seek by emojin heap mixed with the james bond theme so those are things i do like so i do want to see very distinct. I mean, like, that is a sound that you would never be able to, like, manifest, hear, replicate it until you hear a song like Die Together, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then Giorgio's Papadop- um, Papadopoulos says, um, normally I don't have a lot of confidence and focus in Evangelinos, 
um, who's the one doing the staging. He's done, he did Russia, what year is that? 2016 and Spain 2019. But somehow I think he'll get it right this, uh, somehow, somehow he thinks he's going to get this one right. Um, I, I mean, agreed. <laughs> Some of that staging's yeah. low much. Um, 2016 Russia was everything. Like, mm-hmm. just everything. And that, this is not appropriate. Like, that's not appropriate for this at all. And Spain 2019, yeah. that staging alone is why that song came so low. Confident mm. in that statement. Um, maybe he's gonna get it, you know, right this time, because I'm like, how do you mess this up? It doesn't need to be that expensive, is the thing. Like, lean into the song. Like, you yeah. don't need to make excess with the staging like you tend to do. And I, I can't see Amanda being willing to go with something that's gonna be too much. I hope not, yeah. I think, like, I think with her as the artist, she's gonna have some say in it, because she's gonna be the one that has to do everything on the stage. So my guess is that she'll be able to go, no. You know what I mean? Um, she doesn't need to dance. She doesn't need to move. She needs to just be. I, I have an idea in my head for staging. Um, I'll talk about it later, I guess. I'm kind of holding on my staging thoughts until it's too late um, for them to take my ideas. <laughs> but yeah, um, the next thing is, can it be performed live well? Yes. Very um, well. like this very, live. Very well. Live symphonic version that's absolutely cool. Studio replication. Beautiful. Do we stream it? Yeah. Yes, I do. Of course I do. Mm-hmm. And then, um, do we think it's going to qualify? Yes. I think yes, song- it's actually like, even in semi one, one of the most certain qualifiers by far. Uh huh, 100%. Also, with this one, um, there's a pack of five songs, and this is not five songs I think could possibly win. Because I, mm-hmm. I haven't narrowed down my pack yet. It's still a pack of five. And Miss Amanda's on that pack. So, yeah, Die Together by Grease. We love it. Um, let's go ahead and Great talk job, about... Please. Let's take a trip on a boat. And mm-hmm. let's ride that boat over to Malta. So, uh, Malta is being represented by... Um, <clears throat> sorry. Malta is being represented by Emma Muscat with the song I Am What I Am. Uh, do you want to start off with the lyrics there? Yeah, so you guys, um, do you, all right, sh- should I take the angle that this is more of a kid's song or more of an ESL learning song? Um, um, lyrically, it is so simple that if you st- were studying English for one year, even less than that, you could probably understand this entire thing. It's a lot of one to two syllable words. It's a message song, very clear message, very common message. The lyrics, I don't hate them. But uh, I also don't feel like they're they're trying to be anything that you don't already see. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm going to read my notes verbatim. This is a self-empowerment message song with the title of, with the trait lyrics. The song is about being confident in yourself. As somebody with imposter syndrome, this song only makes me feel confident in my dislike of this song. Ooh, ooh, ooh! Um, what in here? It's so bad I can't read my own handwriting. Um, yeah, this is no, like no. I I already said I don't like those like self empowerment songs at all. I think like most of them are just not good. Especially with a diversity music video, right? <laughs> okay, can we talk about how insulting that music video is for like a couple of seconds or like an hour and a half? Because I got time. Um, tell me, tell me all about it. <laughs> I got time here, and that time says, <laughs> "Okay, we need an old lady." Okay, yeah, we have an old lady. She's like, "Yes, old lady." Um, we need someone who is gender non-conforming. Okay, we got that. Check that off the list. Gender non-conforming. Got that in the box. All right, we need a fat girl, because you know Emma's not fat. Like she's not at all chunky. So we need a fat girl because we need to make sure that the fatties understand they're represented. Okay, yeah. Okay, cool. Add a fatty in there. Um, and then we need a black person because, you know, last year we set up flat. We fit someone who's fat and black. So we have to have someone who's fat and then someone who's black in this music video too. And then 
We need an Asian. Okay, cool. Got an Asian. Check yeah. her off the list. I almost forgot about her. And last but not least, we need someone who's neurodivergent. You know, there's a lot of talk about neurodivergency and representation for people who are on the autism spectrum. How do we come, how do we make sure people know that this person's neurodivergent? I know, make them stare at the reflection in a mirror. Like, until Emma comes and saves him. It's bad. This music video is honestly so gross. It is so insulting. Like, it is the worst music video of the year. By far. And, like, I hate it. I hate it so much. And, like, we're here about a song contest, not a music, like, not a staging contest. But, yo. What is happening? What is happening with that music video? Because I hate it. It's so... It's so, you know what? We need to make sure everyone knows that this song is supposed to empower them. So, you know what? Emma, you're too pretty. We need to have some more people in there who can feel empowered by your message. My question is, did they honestly just grab, like, tourists off the street of Malta and were like, okay, listen to this song once. We only got you for, like, an hour. Let's do this. Yeah, not even an hour. <laughs> I feel like minutes. they went in the street and grabbed some random people. <laughs> I... What is this? I don't understand. Like, it took us so long to figure out the, like, neurodivergence one, you know? It's like, that one was never really indicated. People were like, bowl I... cut? Is, is that the diversity thing we're going for here? Monica Lou is right there. I honestly, I, I went with that one off the bat because I just think of, like, I, I just, like, think of all the bad representation of people I see who are neurodivergent. In the world, and I was like, "Oh yeah, that's that that immediately." That's what I thought when I saw the music video. I was like, "Oh, that's what they're going for." Um, <laughs> that that was never clear. That was never clear for not, someone like me. But like, I I that's what I thought immediately was like. At least I, you picked it up. I don't know. Like, I just <laughs> I was like, "What is this music video? I hate it." It's so it's like I, I can't listen to the song without picturing the music video. I, I just simply can't. I same. I'm not gonna lie. I, that's bad. Sometimes it's good, but in this case, it's bad, especially when your music video is that situation. Half ass algorithm clapping. Oh my god! Everything about you know what? Whatever. Like production and genre. Her hair go. looks great, by the way. Her hair looks amazing. <laughs> I mean, they're sponsored by Moroccan oil. Uh oh! What did I just do? Um, oh. Can you, are you still there? Hold on. Cancel. I'm still here. Okay, yeah. I sorry. I dropped my notebook on my keyboard, and it made oh. <laughs> a weird pop up. Okay. Um, production is good. Good. Productions. Oh my gosh! I forgot that there's production there. Um, I, I forgot wrote... that there's genre. <laughs> I'm sorry, my notes are hard to read. Production is great. The gospel choir, piano chords. Um, the way the piano chords are going is leading us into a course. Okay, I know it was, I, I, my handwriting. Um, I basically wrote the production is good. Uh, the gospel choir and the piano, like the way the piano chords are structured, are leading you into that uplifting yeah. chorus. Um, so production and songwriting wise, that is what you want to do with a song like this, is have your hook be on a bright note. Um, and that brightness, believe, yeah. Cool. Exactly. It kind of leads up to that hopefulness of, you know, I am what I am and I'm confident in myself. Now you can be confident too. Um, but yeah, that's it. This this is the better I am song, you know? This is the better personal pronoun forward <laughs> song. Yes, it, it, it is the better of the two. But they're both dire. Um, and then <laughs> unique elements. Swirling. Unique elements. I'm a muscat. I wrote White Hot Rage. Um, just because that music video is so upsetting to me. So the unique element is just like, oh yeah, this triggers my anger. Musically, no, same it's though. fine. Same though. Visually, my bottom two songs were both songs that 
rate that me in, induce anger within me. Um, yeah. And this is included. <laughs> this is the visual one, and then the one that's last is the one that gives me audio anger. Like when I hear it, I just get angry. Um, so that lets us know I do not stream this. I do every so often when I'm in like a Camp Rock the Final Jam mood, but not every time. I was too old like, for Camp Rock. I know of Camp Rock, but I was too old for it. Um, this is exactly the kind of thing Demi Lovato would have sung in 2010, Circa. So yeah, that's where that's where I was. Ooh, that's a dark place. Um, and then, can it, oh, can we perform well? Yes, yes, it can be. She sells it. She sells it so hard. That's the thing. She yeah. she is doing everything she can. But does she sell it enough to make it qualify? Just, like, out of sight was the better song. Out of I sight was the better song, just overall. You're right. Okay, oh. how do you change your song and make it worse? Like, you're going to change your song from what you got selected. I know you're signed to a good record label. They didn't have anything else you could borrow. They didn't have this anything right, else you could pick up. Like, Aphrodisiac was probably going to be more... Confident. You know, you know what? Um, we're missing a symphonic song this year. Yeah. Because when I heard that they're going to change the song, I was like, oh, they're going to go buy something from Symphonics. And then it's going to be a bop. And I'm going to be like, heck yeah. yeah. Or like they do like Ear Alaska. They went they called up my girl Emily Peterson Hammer. Mm -hmm. And they're like, hey, you want to come down here, do our backing vocals, and bring us a banger? Yes. But no. Walk on Water was the right decision. That was that yes. was the right decision because this isn't Chameleon was off. This is not the this, correct decision. No, it's not. You it should was have not. stuck with your first song mm -hmm. and revamped it because this is. Imagine it with a solid revamp. Imagine Out of Sight with a solid revamp. Like that is potentially like top twenty-five material in my book. Yeah. Like you could have landed mid table with me. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I know how the Malta, like Malta does at Eurovision. You know what, Emma? I like you. We'll just find you know a better song, come back to MESC, and win again. Yeah, we'll, we'll go song shopping. Let's do it. It'll be fun. Yeah, you know, we can go shopping and get something that's less this because it's not, uh, it's not it. So from Malta, we're going to go ahead. Should we take a boat or a plane this time? We'll take um, a plane. We'll take a plane. We're gonna go let's ahead. Go, yeah, let's take a plane. <laughs> We're gonna take our plane over to Portugal yeah. with the song "Saudade, Saudade" by Maro. And I want to start off with lyrics this time. Please. Pers I am surprised it took Portugal. I am surprised it took Portugal this long to bring us a song called "Saudade," because. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the word. Like, when you think of Portugal, you think of Sadade. Or when you think of Portuguese, you think of Sadade. Um, it's it, it took them like 60 years. Yeah. To get to this point. And this song, I feel like, encap encap encapsulates that. Like, it's a word that's hard to translate to English. It's more mm. of a mood, you know what I mean? I think. So, this fits that. Like, the song is about loss, and it's about grieving. And mm -hmm. with that being said, there's like this melancholy, but fondness when you're looking at someone who's passed away. Which and is a very Portuguese thing to do. That This song has such a Portuguese identity with, just with its, like, the energy that it carries in the word saudade, saudade. Yeah, like, it's like, you know, O Jardim, mentioned that one before, which O Jardim mm -hmm. was robbed. I'll keep saying it. Don't let me say it again. Liminally. I thought I thought they were gonna pull a double. I thought the odds were pretty high, actually. <laughs> same, same. Um, like it has. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, Leo S. Thank you. I, I thank you for my top uh, compliment. <laughs> or unless you're talking to Jordan, we'll talk about his shirt later in a minute. Um, but yeah, yeah, no. I just I think this song is beautiful, um, and I think that that it, it gives us that portuguese feeling and it feels very portuguese but doesn't sound super portuguese because it's not fado so it's like a modern take of what it means to sound portuguese but keep that portuguese spirit mm -hmm. honestly to me like with the lyrics 
Okay, so we talked earlier about how Emma Muscat's lyrics are very simple and the message is quite clear. I do argue the same thing for this song. The message is very simple and it's quite clear. But the lyrics are just that much more beautiful. There's a lot more nuance. There's a lot more to like dissect in its simplicity. It isn't just face value. Like you are getting the message on the surface, but when you go deeper, it goes so much deeper. And I just think that is absolutely irreplaceable. This is probably one of the best songs I've heard from Portugal, and Portugal is, I think, in my top two favorite countries of Eurovision. Like, there, yeah. this has so much artistic merit in lyrics alone. Yeah. Lyrics alone. We haven't even moved on to the points yet, you guys, but the lyrics... Yeah. If I had to give the trophy to anyone who wasn't Mia Dimšić, I it very well might be Maro. I mean, it, exactly. If they're simple lyrics, they're beautifully written and beautifully put together. There's poetry here. Um, it's I get evocative, and when I hear it, I just feel like I'm being bathed in like this warm love. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's also very much a bath. Love. Like a lot of people allude to water with this when they describe this song it's like we're all clearly getting a very like yeah. soft like, watery comforting energy in the best way possible yeah like you know how um like with the stage there's got the water feature and they've got the round thing i need to adjust myself in the seat hold on um they don't the use that if they don't use that i'm getting arrested <laughs> um there. oh there you are <laughs> I don't know. Like I, okay. with the oh, okay. staging, you have a sun. You have a, You can make a sunset. You can make water. That's very much something that's existed within human consciousness, and associating that combination of the sunset with water, with death, and with loss. It's something that's existed in a lot of cultures. Specifically, it's making me think of ancient Egypt, where mm. you have on the. Um, one side of the Nile River is where they did all the burials and stuff. Because that's associated mm -hmm. with the sunset. Um, and that's like the land of the dead. And so bringing yourself to that space where you have the river. Like Greek mythology, you have the river. Um, oh my gosh, Styx is the name of the river. Um, mm -hmm. And then like in some South American mythologies as well, you have a river as well that connects you to death. Oh yeah, there's a little bit of Brazil, now that you mentioned like that as well. There's a little bit and of Brazil. Bringing that water yeah. with, I think with us, a lot of us are thinking of the water because we do associate yeah. that kind of with death. Um, and from a staging aspect, okay. you could get something gorgeous okay. if we got a water feature. And mm. I've already said too much, but like we, we want water, yeah. we want the sun. And this song feels like that. It feels like the mm. water and the sun. Or like you're at your grandmother's funeral plot and it's by like a pond on a, on a sunny day. You know what I think it is? I, I think it's just like Cyprus, you got to the beach, it's going to be great, you're going to have a great time. Portugal is after you've had the fun, now it's time to chill. Yeah, and uh, Daniel the um, Theophano, oh, sorry, sorry, Daniel Theophanos um, says the song is gorgeous but the live performance video looks like an all-female panel of tech conference uh, all female panel at a tech conference okay you know what Dang. i agree i don't like the staging in portugal Dang. it needs to change 100 um, percent i like it the I staging, like it. In, in, you say tech conference i say camp counselor this is like the song that you sing by the bonfire like the staging not the song the staging is song you sing at the bonfire the last day before you go home from summer camp um, I was a Girl Scout camp counselor in my teenage years. And this I believe is, that. This is giving me Girl Scout vibes. Like, camp counselor Girl Scout vibes. If you ever need to do tie-dye, I got you. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm the queen of tie-dye. You know, I'm good at handicrafts. Counselor meeting. Macrame, I got you on the macrame. Like, I have skills that I developed as a camp counselor at a Girl Scout camp. At some point, we're going to dive into that because I'm curious now. You've never mentioned that. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I've, I've, I've led an interesting life, I think. I don't know. Um, no, it's just I had rich grandparents. <laughs> I'm sorry. What were you we talking? Oh, so yeah, like production, production and genre, maybe. Production and genre, it fits that mood too. Um, is there a genre of 
songs that make me want to cry and think about my grandma. Because that's what this genre is, and it does that genre beautifully. Um, this is weird segue, but when I uh, went to college, one of the classes I took was uh, audio science, mm -hmm. and one of the features we learned about, like, time is just like with a waltz, like one, two, three, one, two, three. Like, it tends to keep people like in motion. Mm -hmm. Like, even if, even if they're not, like, dancing to a waltz, having that time, it just tends to keep, like, people's bodies swaying. With this song, you see that um, done very intentionally, because it's just, like, the way water moves, you know, the way life moves. Mm -hmm. It's just, you, you feel like you're progressing through this song, making motion through this song. And I feel like that is part of the reason why, having, like, the one, two, three timing. But also, it's just so clear. All the instruments you hear are so clearly so um you, you can hear them distinctly and as that like it progresses gets more uh, <clears throat> advanced you start to hear kind of like more of the genre come out and the genre feels very portuguese diaspora it feels brazil to me and i really enjoy that i'm kind of getting a south american flavor um in the execution especially with the harmonies yeah i think yeah. you said one two three i think it's in it's not I don't think I don't think it's in three four I think it's in maybe six eight yeah I think oh, it's okay. six eight because when you get to the clapping mm -hmm. part where they're all clapping to kind of keep the rhythm up more that's more six eight than it is three mm -hmm. four I all right I'm just because six eight and three four kind of sound they, they sound very similar um mm -hmm. okay yeah I, I mean, maybe we can call and ask hey is this in six or watch it be in like twelve sixteen or something um, I just, cause, it, and I think that clapping bit helps keep the drive going because you do get into a point where it's very much so like, sort, sort of like slowish, you know what I mean? There's like a very yeah, that, slow that keeps the energy right where it needs So to you're be. coming in with the clapping mm -hmm. and with that clapping, that's kind of keeping you where you need to be and keep you in the movement of the song rather than get distracted and lose you. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um... Wow, Georgios hmm. dropped us a comment. What up, Georgios? What's what he got to say? Okay, sorry. I like I can't read quite all of it, but don't get mad. But, oh wait, hold on to me. Okay, sorry. <laughs> it's don't get me wrong. Um, I think Germany is last place, but Portugal will be the only country to challenge it. If the staging stays the same. You know what? Uh, if the staging stays the same, like agree. <laughs> that staging oh, is not oh, good. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I agreed right. on the staging. I, if the staging stays the same, I don't think it's going to even qualify. Wow. Okay, so clearly, like, that's going to be the Achilles heel of Portugal then. Yeah, that's going to be... The thing is with Portugal, as you never know if they're going to qualify or not, it's about what Europe is feeling. Mm -hmm. So, because of the fact that you never know what's going to happen, uh, I need it in the camera. Sorry. I need it in the final. Yeah. So, because you never know exactly what's going to happen when you when it's um, Portugal, because Europe sometimes get it gets it, sometimes they don't. Um, mm -hmm. If that staging stays the same, it's not. I think that the staging is going to improve it. Uh, improve because um, Festival de Cansao always has very stripped back basic staging. It's yeah. kind of like the same thing as San Remo, where there's not really much staging. Mm -hmm. I mean, Portugal has more structure than San Remo, which is just, I guess, wander around the stage and scream into, like, a microphone or sometimes. I don't... You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> ESC Viral says, give that wolf a banana makes me cry about my grandma, LOL. <laughs> oh. My grandma used to make some great banana pudding so i see that i don't like banana pudding but she used to make it and i used to like it when she made it other than uh -huh. that i reject banana pudding um <laughs> uh then uh next thing here is uh unique elements so that day so that is so that day. i mean i i think the production itself is the unique element in my opinion because, I mean, we have a lot of songs, especially in this semifinal, that are like sad guitar girl songs, mm -hmm. but this one feels ethnic, it feels clear, and it, I also feel like it has one of the strongest storytellings out of all the songs that are similar to it. Mm -hmm. 
I th- yeah, if they do change the staging, then I do feel like qualification is a lot more certain. But we really have to lean into the song. Europe really just has to be feeling it. It doesn't matter what Portugal does. It matters what Europe's opinion is. Yeah, um, I my, my unique element was just the writing the word to die. It, it mm. sounds like it captures, if you need to teach someone what that word means. Yeah. There you go. Just take them to Portugal, and then they'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. I'd be like, dang, I can't I can't live about to make it. I was about to quote a uh, Flow Rider song. It's going down temper. Sorry, I have to adjust my camera again. Okay. Featuring Kesha on Scooter <laughs> Brown's contract. Ugh, we don't talk about that. We don't talk um, about that. <laughs> so the next thing is, can it be performed well live? The answer is yes. Yeah. It's not very challenging to be performed live. It's an art piece. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't call it an art piece, but you know, it can be performed well live. I mean, everything is art. Um, Mm -hmm. then the next point is, do we stream it? Yes. Make that clear. Mm -hmm. Um, and then do we think it's going to qualify? Yes. I, I know it's not super certain, but my answer is yes. I wrote yes too. Yeah. Yay. That's a very hopeful yes, you guys. We're, we're just holding out hope here. I think it's at this point, I think it can do it, but if it doesn't, Mm -hmm. it's going to be like 11th or 12th. I really don't want to see that happen, though. I really don't want to see that happen at all. I don't want to see it happen either, but I think... And you know what? Um, Mara went to Berkeley. When was the last time we had a... We went to Berkeley tonight. I worked out there. No, no, no. No, no, no. Not your school. Berkeley School of Music. It's in Boston. (laughs) I was about to say, like, was she really my neighbor? (laughs) No, she went to Berkeley, like, with two E's. Um, Oh, okay. But when was the last time we had a lady from Portugal writing a song who went to Berkeley? I don't think that's ever happened. It has. Re- what? Really? Who? <laughs> Louisa Sobral yeah. went to Berkeley. Well, I mean, I should have I should have known something when I heard her accent. Well, okay, I mean, they, like they, she, Mara, say, but Mara doesn't have it. Uh, she doesn't have an accent. Mara does not have an accent at all. Um, I mean, she has an accent, but she, like, when she speaks English, she sounds like she could be from here, is what I mean. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Berkeley. That's the... Um, so because of that, you know, what happened last time, they won. So who knows? Um, next entry we're going to be talking about now is San Marino. All right. Um, so again. I'm going to let you take the reins on this one because... We, we all right. So we talked about the Achilles deal for Portugal. Now we move on to Achilles Lauro. There we go. <laughs> Representing Darn it! Marino Darn it! Oh my God! You beat me there. Shadow. That was a good transition. That was a good one. But was I tried. Like a segue. I tried. Achilles Lauro. And what do? You, what is Lauro? Lauro is laurels. What does laurels go to? The victor. What is on the flag of San Marino? Laurels. Anyways. <laughs> Stop! I'm gonna I'm gonna have an aneurysm. <laughs> I mean, yes. Uh, the song is called "Stripper," um, and it is performed by Achille Laro, and he's representing San Marino, which are is a combination of words I did not think I would see at your vision ever. Yeah, like go through a portal and tell your old self, like a year ago, that whole situation. <laughs> just just try. Yeah. So like, hey. Um, Lily, remember that, like, dude from, like, San Remo who you're like, oh, is he hot or is he not? Or am I, like, crazy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, him? Um, he's gonna go ahead and represent San Marino at Eurovision with a song called Stripper. I mean, it makes sense. Have you seen him? Of course, he has a song named Stripper. That's not shocking at all. Um, mm-hmm. but it's gonna go to Eurovision mm-hmm. and, like, Oh, he was also in San Remo that same year, too, with a song about, like, Sunday was what it was called. And then he had the Harlem, like, church choir behind him. And then he, like, put his hand on his leather pants in front of the church ladies. Um, yeah, that happened. Uh, that was a fever dream. That that whole period, like, that week, <laughs> I still, I don't know what happened that week other than this, um, but it happened. Yeah. Right. We're talking, we've got trees here to talk about and not just this the situation um someone on twitter once what? said I, I can't i wish i could find the person's account um there was a joke that 
if you want to write an Achille Lauro song, you just have to say C, yeah, C. Talk about expensive items and kind of moan a bit. That's what the song is. It's a, okay. it's, it's an Achille Lauro song. He says C. He says yeah. He moans a bit. He talks about Birkins. He talks about, you know, Britney Spears. <laughs> Name drop stuff. Yeah. It, it's an Achille Lauro song. He didn't, mm -hmm. this is what he makes. It's what he does well. So, you know what I mean? Like, it, it all makes sense. Lyrically, this is not deep. It's not... I, like, I really like it lyrically. I, I really like it. Lyrically like it too. Yeah. And here's the thing, because we talked about Finland and that atrocious lyrical situation from them. Well, yeah, his able, yeah. This here is the same kind of topic. It's also sexually empowered younger woman. Mm hmm And But written with perspective. Yes. It it's a better take on that and that's why mm -hmm. i do enjoy this because it's like instead of the object of desire being this like the person you're looking at and jezebel is the object of desire and it's very much about your feelings being pushed onto her this one here mm -hmm. seems more like your feeling her feelings pushed onto you mm -hmm. and like it's like you ready to go sweaty finish man i mean I guess um, this is giving me like I can see like money pig fin dom happening and that's f i n fin dom in this song lyrically. Um, it's it's got the kind of sex appeal you want when you listen to an Akila Lara song because all his music has it's sexy like it, there's a sexual situation happening with the way he performs and this suits that too. Um, yeah, I just, like, everything, and, like, that ties into production and genre for me, too, because it does sound like a song you would hear at a strip club, but, like, an older strip club, like, because, or specifically, it sounds like a song you'd hear at a white strip club, because mm -hmm. you get two different styles of strip clubs, and at least that's how it is here in the States, I don't know about other places, but here, it's like, there's a white strip club, there's a black strip club. This is not the music you'd hear at the black club, but this is the music you'd hear at the white club. Sorry, my sister's roommate is a an exotic dancer. So this mm. made me think about her. I sent it to her and she's like, oh my gosh, I love that. What's the name of that song? <laughs> it's, well, I mean, like, it's it's just done so well. And it's just like, okay, I get it. He's, the song is called Stripper. But the thing is, he knows how to, like, do just, like, a casual tease on stage that's just the right amount of suggestive for Eurovision, you yeah. know? Just the, just the right amount. So you know he's just holding it right over your head. And you're like, dang. <laughs> All that I could have. But that's the intention of the song. I'm sorry, Giorgio made a comment. I like What's Finland up? too, but Achille is a stronger vocalist than Lowry. No. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not under any delusion that Achille Lauro is a good singer. Okay, oh. but he doesn't have to be a good singer. Because that's not what his songs are about. Mm -mm. It's about the full performance package. Because I've mentioned before, you can have bad vocals. I'm, I'm one of those people. I don't care if you your vocals aren't on point. If you entertain me, that's what mm -hmm. I need. That's what he does. He entertains me without having a perfect okay. vocal. Because this song, imagine going to a club and hearing yeah. someone like belt out six note runs while you're watching a, a lady on the pole. Like, no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Wrong kind of art. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, for this song, that's not what it's giving me. Um, mm -mm. I'm sorry. I just wanted to take a moment because I'm like, I'm not crazy. I don't think he can sing well, but he he entertains. I mean, me. no, that's honest. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Vanya Lubich. Um, it still feels surreal, feel surreal. that Achilles at Eurovision. It what does. You? It really, really does. And the fact that he's not even the first artist this year to try to represent two different countries, but he actually succeeded. I mean, yeah. He's, he's the first Eurovision artist, in my knowledge, to have succeeded in winning, or like, in going to two national selections in one year and actually winning one of them. 
Yeah, no, I I think so. Here's the other thing. I think that's going, if he wants to go to Eurovision, having to go for San Marino would make the most sense. Because yeah. he's never going to win San Remo. Italy's saturated. San Remo's saturated. It's not even that. It's like he doesn't have, he's not going to make a song that's going to win San Remo. Mm -hmm. If he did, it wouldn't really feel like a song from him. And mm -hmm. San Remo isn't about winning and going to Eurovision. San Remo is about showcasing Italian music, which yeah. he does. It's mm -hmm. just he's not going to win San Remo. So him going over to, you know, going over to San Marino makes sense for me. That, it was definitely the best situation for him and a great mm -hmm. situation for the country of San Marino, too, because yeah. everyone in San Marino knows Achille Lauro. Yeah, like exactly. They feel represented by someone who is like within their um constituency basically but they feel represented by someone who is like an iconic performer in the italian music sphere yeah that's amazing like we don't get that often for san marino yeah no um and then uh what are we talking about production and genre i guess because mm -hmm. like yeah so with production and genre it's really hard rock cafe yeah that's what it is i think the the Musically, this is not much happening. The guitars, the drums, everything is very repetitive in this. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not about the song. It's about the overall package. Yes. Um, and then for unique elements, what unique. did you have written down? Oh my gosh, it's like I'm in a vocoder. For unique elements, it's definitely him as a performer. Like, yeah. I don't typically say that for like for the unique elements box, but that is absolutely it. He is one of, he's like construct a level of iconic in this year. And that's really all he needs. That is the unique element. And that's what everyone's looking forward to. Yeah. Um, my unique element, I just wrote was him. I just wrote Kine mm -hmm. Laro. That's what the note says. Yeah. Um, now can this be performed live? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's better live mm -hmm. because you have the visual, you have him and he's what, you know, you're buying. Um, yeah. Do we stream it? Yes. Yes. It's not only mm -hmm. on my Eurovision playlist either. I've got like a playlist that's mostly classic rock songs. And it fits in real well there. Like, oh, wow. It, fits it in went up an extra long. <laughs> yeah. It's on my Melons playlist. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then do we think it's going to qualify? This is the hardest determiner yet because there's a lot of directions, in my opinion, that point to yes, but a lot that point to no as well. <sighs> I used to be more confidently in saying yes before. I still think the answer is yes. Um, just because I'm looking at like who's voting in that semi, and I know what I know he's gonna be charismatic on stage. I know okay. what he does on stage, and so I'm confident that his charisma will be able to get him through. Okay, I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes for San Marino. Oh, thank you. Um, I also, <laughs> if he keeps the mullet thing that's going on, please, I think that would be great. Like the mullet cowboy animal print look. That's great. Mm -hmm. I think that's what you should wear. Um, just because it's very, like, old rocker, you know what I mean? Like the, oh, yeah. The he, older rocker he needs thing. To that. That'll be great. Well, that's the, thing that's, a, that's the thing that's appealing to me about him. It's like he makes his, like, plays with other genres from the past. Um, mm -hmm. But we're going to head into our last song for our host, Country of Italy. The song is Privity by Mahmoud and Blanco. And they can't see the full flag. They can kind of, I guess, take a guess um, <laughs> that Italy. Italy is uh, who we're talking about. So, yeah. And the, yeah. the jacket <laughs> should have given it yeah. away. <laughs> yeah. um, right, so... We're talking about Brevity from mm -hmm. Italy, uh, being sung by Mahmoud and Blanco. Uh, do you want to kick it off with lyrical mm -hmm. content? Yeah, uh, I love the lyrics, you guys. Um, I don't really know what else to say about that. I mean, the lyrics, okay, so the song is called Chills. That's the name of the song in English. And the song itself, lyrically, it's kind of about that moment like before or after kind of an intimate session and you're contemplating just like your feelings for the person in in real time and it's giving you and it's giving you a sensation of chills just thinking of the possibility of like, losing that i articulated that terribly but 
it, it's really hard to describe the full feeling that these lyrics gave me other than just simply chills. It really leans into just when it says brividi, 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 it invigorates that sense of chills to a point where it's like I have not recognized that sensation in any other like Eurovision song that was placed as intentionally as that. Usually I get that sensation when it's like a big high note or a big dance number like Chanel. With this one, it is specifically the hook at the end of the chorus that carries all of that forward. And when I say all of that, I'm talking about the story in the lyrics, that saudade even feeling that we experience with it. I think it's gorgeous. Yeah. Um, I couldn't say better myself. Uh, to quote Vanya Lubitsch in our comments, the song gives me many privities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, from well, that first hey, hey. time we hear, hear the guitar coming in, because you get the leading note of the piano, it's like the piano, and then you get the guitar. When I hear mm -hmm. that electric guitar and the quality in that guitar, the first time I heard the song, I stopped what I was doing. I was working and I put the person I was talking to on mute. And I sat and I watched this performance. And I, you know, was went back to work. Um, it was just like I had to stop what I was doing and take the time to give Brividi the attention. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, at the time I didn't have any lyrical context because um, I'm just watching San Remo with everyone else. And then I look mm -hmm. up the lyrics, I'm like, this is beautiful. Like, there's the line about, like, a sky, a pearl from the sky. Like, I'm going to climb up and take, a, like, a star down for you, and, like, I'll do this, this, and this for you. But there's, still, like, a so recognition. Rich. So rich. And, like, there's still, like, a recognition in there of, like, your bad qualities, too. Like there's the parts mm -hmm. in the song where there's the argumentative nature of what's going on and like that comes in on the bridge like the bridge gets this more aggressive feeling to it and it's like you're thinking of the bad things along with the good things that built up and this person that you love and there's a complexity there that isn't often explored where we see more it's mostly positive rather than negative as well and i think this has that range yeah, it's, it's very, very special in that regard. And I'm so happy that it is so rich with metaphor because one thing I love specifically about Italian songwriting is that they never shy on metaphor. Yeah. And that feels so patriotic about this song. Yeah, it's like one of those things, it's like a nuance you get once you like get into Italian music more, you see that little bit of a nuance there. It's like when you're exploring genres, not superficially, um, as you get more in. Um, Oh, yeah, ESC Viral says, uh, Italy feels very poetic, but also very grounded. And that's what it feels like. Yeah, that, that's the grounding. Mm -hmm. Instead of the soaring emotions of just positive or just the soaring emotions of negativity, it's a combination of the two. So it does have that very much grounded feel to it. I do see that there. And the composition, gorgeous. Like, everything. Composition, yes. I'm going to bring in production, too. It feels like it's very thoughtful. Like, every element is there for a reason. And if you take any element away, it wouldn't be perfect like it is. There's nothing about the song I would change. Um, it's something I would call, like, a perfect song because there's no thing, there's no qualities to this song that would make me, that I would want to change around, if that makes sense, to improve it because everything is perfect. Um, yeah, it's just oh, yeah. It's so good. Uh, just just capitalizing on uh, your point of its perfection, when I heard the electric guitar when the song opened, that reminded me very much of Inuyasha. So oh Mahmoud's uh, one of the lead singles from Ghetto Limpo, his sophomore album. Uh, I That immediately said Mahmoud to me. As soon as I heard that chord, those two chords actually, going into the melody. So this is a very Mahmoud-style melody. I just kind of like can recognize that within his like songwriting, but it's not just that. It is also very, very, very Italian, like with the symphonics, with the uh, harmonizing, with the performance style. It just feels patriotic Italian, not like and not even exclusively just like a Mahmoud sound, not even exclusively a Blanco sound, but an Italian sound like yeah. this is something that the country can all sing together and just generally be proud of. And like it harkens back to the Italian orchestral heyday of Eurovision when they were when like orchestra was the only arrangement that anyone could even use. But Italy pays very 
very excellent respect to that, first of all, by using San Remo as a national selection, so they're always connected to the orchestra, but also because, I don't know, it's just, it's just right where it should be. It's right where it should be at this point in time for Italy, and it feels like it's the perfect song to represent following Monskin, you know? Yeah. Um, it, 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 it doesn't feel like, and it doesn't feel like a derivative either. It Mm-mm. feels like a good, it, it doesn't feel like it's derivative. It feels like it's what the choice was going to be no matter what. Mm-hmm. Um, like if you put it in a vacuum of just this year at San Remo, this is what it was going to be like, and like there's, yeah, it's just really beautiful. And I think that Italy could really be proud with, with this entry. Um, so, can it perform live well? It could be performed live really well. I do have one note, though. They need to stop acting so in love on I stage. Really... They're confusing so many of us. Honestly, it comes off to me, like, my brother and his friends, how they act with each other. Like, lots of face grabbing and lots of, like, kissing each other. And then, like, also punching each other. Like, my brother and his friends are very are very odd I think or maybe that's normal I don't know I don't spend time around boys um but it it comes off very much like my brother and like how my brother is with his friends um I think it the live performance is excellent other than the fact that like they they got such like weird dynamic (laughs) chemistry it's like watching like a broke back mountain scene you know it's like are they loving are they fighting and confused but it's intense (laughs) I'm not going that far it comes off very much of like juvenile teenage boy friendship to me but then also again, it might be because there's kind of like a, more or less a teenage boy there yeah. i mean blanco's what like 19 he, yeah he's 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 a, a, a human golden retriever puppy specifically a puppy mm-hmm. still of a golden retriever um mm-hmm. yeah no i i yeah this can be performed what live well also the thing is like we have to remember there's no state we don't know what the stage is going to be yet um no idea but the san remo Remo. staging i i liked it because it was simple it wasn't trying to do anything else other than show the song and if they go that direction for eurovision it's not going to be that big of a detriment i think yeah but also it's going to just i think it'd be a little confusing to people you know what i mean like you said you like it comes off to you as romantic when you watch the first thing when i didn't have any context to it it kind of felt romantic to me too and i was like what is this um Mm -hmm. But that's that. (laughs) I'm sorry. Then uh, the next thing is, do we stream it? Yes. I don't think I've ever skipped it. I stream it. It's on my main 2022 Uh playlist. So... See, I I don't under... Okay, really quickly. I don't understand people who are so, like, contentious with this being a bad song. I'm seeing that a lot on Twitter, and I'm not sure if it's because people don't necessarily want to see a double performed, but this is competent enough to win. Oh, I was going to say that, because the next thing is, like, left or right side of the scoreboard. This is in that pack of five songs that he could possibly win this year. I I think it's in the pack of three songs, frankly. Like, it's just, let's be realistic, you guys. I mean, this is, this is a, these are two practiced artists. These, this is a very symphonic, memorable melody and it, it's already qualified for the final. Sure, it has, like, spot number nine, so it's not the most ideal spot, but this is one of the most popular host entries we've... This is probably the most popular host entry we've seen in the contest. Yeah. It, it's it's more popular than... Um, it's way more popular than uh, the Netherlands were the last two years. It's more yeah, it's more popular than... Yeah, it's more popular than... A New Age, Au Jardin, um, Time... If I were sorry, like think, like listen back to all of these titles of these songs and try to remember how any of them charted. This song has remained at like the top of Italy's charts for like months at this rate, if not like number one, then at least like in the top ten. I'm assuming. Yeah, but like, it's the, the whole country's behind the song. Yeah, the jury's gonna like this. The tele- the jury, jury's where you're more concerned with Italy. You know yes, what I mean? Definitely. Like the jury's where they're. But I can't imagine the jury's not enjoying this. The, ju- the jury's the reason why Mahmoud didn't win 2019. Yeah. Frankly. Um. Well, you know what? I have thoughts about why that happened. This isn't the stream yep. for that. Um, but you know what? We're going to rewatch 2019. Yeah. And talk about it. Yeah. We will. We should do a rewatch of 2019. 
But yeah, uh -huh. like, um, the, the televote's going to give us points. The jury is where I'm more worried, but if you're a juror and you mark this down, why? Yeah, but there really is no reason. There is no reason to mark this down. At all. Yeah, I'm, I'm really trying to think, like, in terms of the final. It's like, there's Sweden, there's Spain, there's Ukraine, there's Greece. Here are all the front runners are all super unique. That's the thing. Italy's at the front of here, the front of the pack, because of how unique it is. Like, the fact that it's a host entry is only an, an accompaniment to that. Yeah. Exactly. Um, <sighs> but... I love it. I love it. I can't believe we already talked about all the songs. I know. Can you I believe that? We got through all of them. I think next week we're going to be talking about our site rankings overall, like the website together. Um, so you're going to actually yes. get rankings next week instead of just general chit-chat about the songs. Um, mm -hmm. we'll we're going to have the rankings. So we're going to have like the actual ones who we think are going to qualify yeah. you guys. So it's going to be a test for us. See how good I was. Um, I just, yeah, like, uh, thank you all so much for joining us again. Uh, we will see you, thank you. next week. Oh, wait, I'm we'll be singing there. And yeah. Uh, yeah, like, what's everyone said to us before we close out? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, thank you. Um, we'll be here next week. Uh, next week, I figured out the issue we had to this, uh, today, so we won't be having that one again. Uh, thank you guys again. Well, it might be a completely different one next week, actually. <laughs> we'll see. At one point, I'm going to be the queen of troubleshooting. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just like reading comments here. Check out the site, check out the channel. Also, if you haven't gotten tickets yet, uh, there's going to be two events hosted by Alicia and Michelle, oh, a bar right. crawl happening yes. on Saturday the 7th. And on the Wednesday following that, I forget the exact date, but I will be attending that dinner, which is uh, Volare Dining in Turin, I believe is the title of it. Uh, come by, because frankly, we want to just talk about Eurovision with people. And that's what we're going to do. It's the Eurovision family dinner. Um, it's so the yeah, Eurovision family you. dinner. Exactly. Thank you all so much again. Uh, we will see you later. Um, bye. I'm going to keep smiling. Bye, Why are you trying to... It's been excellent. See you next time.